on the one hour chart and it appears the ABC correction that we were following uh, is, is complete in terms of uh, down for wave A here, uh, back for wave B here and then down for wave C in five waves down through here, the one, the two, the three, the four and the five through here and the simple fact of uh, this pushing up um, quite high here but also in five waves as well. Uh, it'd be clearer to see it on the uh, cash market rather than the futures and the CFD market but it works um, as a one, two, three, four and five up through here. So that means that we will have a uh, an A wave, a B wave and a C wave. This would be the 61.8 retracement level down to here. It may not come that far, but um, that's where the little block of supply uh, demand would be there, the buyers there. And then we should see it work higher from uh, from this point through here. So uh, that's one way to, um, to, to, uh, to, to view it as such through there. Uh, if we're wrong and it does push straight up through here, then you're looking for some type of tested you know, support on, on here uh, and that, that's the key for that area through there. Um, I also do want to point out too, it's just a small thing, but it's, it's worth sort of mentioning as well is that, and this is on the cash as well, is that in the C wave coming down through here, this wave one here and wave four here overlaps. Now, this is a bit of a no-no, breaks a uh, Elliott rule through here. So it does leave, when that occurs like that, it does leave the possibility open for um, a, uh, well, a, a leading diagonal triangle to the downside in terms of um, all of this here actually being a wave one down here and then a wave two back up through here to the 61.8 retracement level which would be pretty close at the 1650 there however we would need to see this consider this as an a wave a b wave and a c wave up to here as the wave two and then rolling over from that point there so look until the 1650 becomes the the retest the, the support tested support um, then we need to be mindful of this actually being down for wave one and an A and a B and a C back for wave two here. It's only a slight possibility, but we need to um, keep that in uh, in mind. So we'll be working through that and uh, uh, it's going to be a little bit sort of tricky because, um, you know, Wednesday and Thursdays bring those uh, swing days into the marketplace mainly because it, well most most times they have the most news announcements uh, in the in the market so that's well partly one of the reasons I guess so look uh, yeah so that 1650 as a, as a support creates a bull market and that high over here um, being taken out from that point there but we just need to be mindful of one more uh, bearish count that we need to um, uh, put a line through. Uh, and of course, that's the same for the uh, the, the Dow Jones as well. Uh, that's still the S and P five hundred there. Um, the Dow Jones as well. Uh, so I've just noted here that we've got an al the alternative count is the leading diagonal triangle as wave one coming down and wave two coming back up to the sixty one point eight retracement level. Uh, however, this is a very clean five wave structure up through here an impulse wave. So we will get an A B C back and then let's see what we get over here. But once again, um, you know we do flip to the bullish side once it's above the you know the medium level here the next step up is group one which is the one two and three here so support on top of that would see those highs being taken out through there it's one way to look at it the other point is that if this comes back in a nice clean uh three wave structure and try and have a look at that on the cash market to get you know to, to because it'll be much clearer on the cash market um, but a basically a 5.3.5 five structure to the 61.8 retracement level, which is probably a bit lower than that actually. But um, um, yeah, let's just observe that. And if that's the case, if that's a nice clean three-wave structure, then we'll be looking at another five. And that's certainly the bias because of this move through here being five waves. Okay, And that's pretty much the same in Europe. But um, in Europe here, this is the uh, FTSE here. You can see that, you know, this... This um this move down here is 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 quite long, isn't it? You know, it, it's so I've still got it labelled as um, either a wave one, two, 
and three down here and we're pulling back for wave four back into 6500 here because that's the wave four of one lesser degree or if it's going to be the same as the US then it will be a wave C down through here and we'll see a movement to the upside. This movement to the upside here is also in five waves as well. We'll just have a look at that in a smaller picture here. A little bit dodgy to look at but uh, you can see that we've got the strongest wave in the middle here. This will be easier to see on the cash market as well. Um, so essentially what we're looking for here is uh, after these little five waves up through here we're looking at some sort of corrective move back um, this is up for either wave one or a wave back for the b wave the support will be in here um, and then uh, a move a move high there don't worry about that way forward just there um, but because we got five here we'll get another five over through here so the idea is once this does move down if it moves down below the 72 here and then moves back up you know spikes down below the 72 and then finds the 72 of support well then that's the setup to go along at that stage um, if it drops below the 50 and then finds support on the 50 then you can use that one through there so uh, it's a matter of testing lower first testing lower then finding support that's what you're looking for the Australian market a little bit like the English market as well in terms of um, look, you know that we've been searching for for a low down through here and uh, the last little trading session we were looking at the 47.20 here becoming the, um, <coughs> the possible low through here. Now, if the 4800 develops support here, then, you know, we can kind of consider that being a reason you know a reasonably a reasonable possibility that a low's in place at that at that point there. So, um, it's a little bit tricky because you know we don't always follow the US markets as such we've been sort of leading the way in a, in a in our own sort of way and we've also got base metals that have been down quite sharply uh, over the last couple of sessions so uh, the, the copper market being down sort of lower um, so look um, I'll stay with the low here it does count it, looking at all this through here it does count quite nicely into this um, into this current low here but we do need confirmation and one of the confirmation points would be having the 4800 as as a um, as a supporting roll through there so as you can see at the moment the other important number here of course is the 772 uh, so if we do get a spike down through here and then we find support on through here then then you can go along from that point either either that's the case or if the market does open and find its find its legs and feet and so forth and finds the 4780 as support then you could go along from that point and you know it's going to be a struggle up here of course but it should pull back through there if that's not going to be the case and this is going to drop down through here then you know realistically the further this goes down here then from this point here this 61.8 is in the 47.50 area here so we could say that the 47.50 here as a retested resistance would see lower ground at that stage there and then we would have to look at this low here as being an A and a B and a C correction from that point and then this moving down lower here bounce off here and then further down through here so still searching uh, for a low there so that uh, 4750 as long as it stays above that then uh, we could assume that uh, the market will sort of travel in the same direction as uh, as the US markets um, but our market's a bit like the FTSE as well so that FTSE at, at 6500 there the medium level uh, may be doing the same thing the Australian market is going to do and, and move lower because we expect uh, copper to move uh, lower and uh, also gold to move lower as well so placing uh, further pressure on the on the resource sector so let's have a look at some of those markets okay this is the uh, Sheng Zheng market uh, as we had uh, sort of soft figures coming out of China on Monday and uh, I just want to uh, point out here that this is a daily chart for China basically so uh, in terms of the trading levels what we normally see and and Elliot as well is um, a move up through to here um, like the arrivals we call it then we have the reaction then we find support and then we have the first high above the level this is normally the uh, third wave the fourth wave and then five waves up here for 
uh, the uh, fifth wave through here, and then we have the uh, the, the ABC correction across uh, this particular level through here. So that's the way um, I see China at the moment. And obviously that's going to affect um, the resource sector. And uh, in the resource sector, we've got base metals here. This is copper. And um, with the copper market here, our premise has been that a, a drop below the 330 uh, is a is a negative bias, um, but we also were looking at the 325 here. Breaking of that would create short trades from that. So we do have a you know a strong move down through here. The the 61.8 retracement level from this this low to this high here brings us in just below the the 320 here. So we expect this to come down a little bit further through here. Now um, looking at this particular pattern through here. Um, we've always sort of held it as a, as a particular rally going through here. It was just how far that it could possibly go. Um, and it could still go higher as well in terms of, um, at the moment I've got, a, I've got a bearish count on it because it's dropped below the 330 and the 325. However, um, we can still have this up as uh, an A wave to here and then a B wave, alternative B wave over to this area through here, and then five waves up for a C wave up through to here, and then folding over from that point. So that's that's a real possibility. So we'll see the development on this here. And if we just drill into that for a moment, um, this is how it stands at the moment. We're looking at this down through here as a one and a two, and we've got a nice little five wave structure here as a third wave. We'll treat this as the fourth wave, and the fifth wave here would bring us into the 61.8 retracement level through here. So once we've got that five waves there, as I mentioned, that could be an alternative B wave, or it can be the start of a, a stronger move down, and a stronger move down would have this here as um, uh, five, five waves down here for wave one, and then an ABC back for wave two here. So we'll be able to work this out once it, um, once it develops this little structure through here. Um, but uh, for the short term, we will see a, a move down before we see uh, a bounce there. So um, we did see um, uh, BHP and Rio um, down in, in, in London uh, reasonably sort of steady for BHP in the US um, overnight here, but still, that's a daily bar there, still still uh, down and also in negative territory now because it's below the 65 here. So we can pretty much stay short on that uh, BHP trade as such, and that's moving down quite nicely. But we also need to expect um, some support to come in now because of the 50 and 62% retracement level uh, in here as well. And as you know, we've got a quite a developed uh, ABC structure coming into play now. Yes, because of the copper, there can be another little move down through here. Um, so we'll see that play out. But um, yeah, uh, it, it could run away on us. That's, you know, to the downside. That's why we'll just keep moving our stop uh, down from the high point there. The gold market is um, probably, I'm not sure the, the fundamental reasons why, but um, perhaps the China thing as well. But what we are seeing with um, gold now is we are seeing our little five wave structure to the downside. So what we'll see now from the group two support area through here, we'll see a corrective move back, uh, retesting uh, the 1400 here. The supply though is this block here. That's so that's 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 a resistance point, the same as this this uh, these highs here are resistance as well, and they will show up through there. But support on the uh, 1385 here uh, should get us to the 1390. If support is found on the 1390, well, then it'll get you to the 1400 here. But we are looking for some sort of uh, ABC retracement through here and then uh, a move further to the downside there. Uh, silver is in a, in a, a bit of a weaker situation in... in uh, in, in that regards as well. Uh, so, and what I mean by that is, yes, you can see the five waves down through here quite nicely as, as, as with gold, but when we take a closer look back through here, um, we've got, it hasn't taken out previous highs. So it's, it's sort of, if I can just find another chart there for that. Um, You see how these these have got 
um, Silver's got these these older highs here that haven't been taken out, so it hasn't really made an, an effort uh, as much as gold has done to make new highs. So it's always had these lower highs going through here. So this it would sort of point for this to be the better short trade, put it that way. So we could say that um, the 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 twenty well the sixty one point eight retracement levels back up uh, back up. Um, uh, back up into this area through here. I've left this trend line through here and you can draw that two through here um, that can go up higher and, and get it a bit closer into into uh, into that last low there, so to speak. So a retest back up into here if the 22 becomes the the um, the support there. If if this moves higher through here and then finds the twenty two hundred as the twenty two dollars as the resistance, then you can short from that point there. But we are looking for a um, basically an an A and a B and a C wave up through there. And then what you're looking for is you're looking for the first little sort of five waves down as such like this here. And once you've got that, you'll be looking for a counter trend as such like that and then you'll be looking for another move down through here. So uh, that little after three waves, then a little five wave price action, that's your key and your direction because you know if you've got that five waves, you're going to get another five waves. Then it's just a matter of working out the three wave price action from that point and then further down from, from there. All righty, let's have a look at the, uh, the Forex and especially the US dollar. Okay, the US dollar through here, we're expecting, last time we spoke, we were looking for a bounce off the 81, moving back for a wave four at, um, at the 82. That's coming to play now. So we'll be looking for a move lower uh, down towards the 80 through here. But also I have to mention too that um, wave fours can get a little bit complicated. So we may end up seeing um, something like this here. Whoops, a move down through here, then a move back up through here, and then a, then a move down through here. But also too, this is where triangles can occur as well. So we may end up seeing uh, something like that before we before we move down. So uh, we're in group one, so we can expect something complicated. Um, it's nice if it is simple moving straight down because then it makes uh, <coughs> going long on the euro uh, a bit easier as well through here. So. Um, just bear with me for a sec. Okay, so uh, this is the wave count for the upside through here, and we'd be looking at um, a new high coming up through here as well. So, so we'd be looking for a, a, a move up through here, and but once we get to here, then we'll be looking for a. Um, an ABC correction across this level here as well through here before we see any sort of further upside there as well. So as I just mentioned, the wave four in the US dollar may get a little bit complicated because it's just what they do. Um, so, you know, we can obviously get that through here as well. But one of the good things is we can see that this is a corrective move through here. So we should make a new high above that 133. So the trick is to, to move in through here. Uh, the the um, let's just drill in here for a moment in that last chart that we we're looking at through here. So we can see that we've got an impulse structure moving to the upside. This here appears to be a corrective move as well. Obviously, it's diminishing into the close, but um, as long as it stays above the uh, 132.50, so stops at 46 or so, uh, and then moving up. So that number there, the 132.72 there, is obviously going to... Um, create a corrective pattern as well through through there. Um, yeah, a little bit sort of late in the trade, but uh, uh, this is a, a great setup here at the top of group one through here. This is what you normally expect here, just as an example. Uh, you can use that off, off group one here to get you to the, to, the, um, to the midpoint and then waiting for this to be retested. This does appear to be corrective, so we should see a move up from uh, up from here, but there will be resistance um, in this area here, and especially at the uh, 272 here. And the Australian dollar is uh, having its uh, bounce off the um, the 94 here. So we know that base metals, uh, we know that the US dollar will sort of edge to the downside, not that that make a huge difference in this particular case, but we also know base metals are weak as well. So 
uh, the well, that's already been sort of priced in, obviously through here as well. But they still have further to go down. So um, the 94.72 is the line in the sand. If you get support on that, then you go long from that point. Otherwise, we need to consider this a corrective uh, rally through here and uh, further downside. So uh, the other thing that's that needs to be sort of pointed out too is that. The 95 here is the midpoint as well. It's halfway between 80, uh, sorry, 90 and one dollar, of course. And the market is just really working its way through that at the moment. So it's just really sort of arrived here at this at this stage. So it's had its bounce, it's sunk down. It's going to go back up and retest supply there. And you can see that that whole block there is is the resistance through there. So it is going to be pretty tough. And even if that uh, is is a little corrective wave for here and it does push up through here, it's not going to go very far either. So um, you know, into the group one here, the 95.30 sort of area. So um, I, I guess it's a, a, a sort of a getting an understanding of, um, you know, will this 95 become the support or the resistance? And uh, at this stage, it's still working uh, across the 95 there. So if these lows here get taken out, then you'll know that um, this trend line low through here. So the 9420 would give you access to to building a trade uh, further down uh, through here. So uh, 9420 is retested resistance and then 9410 and then the 94 here. And then, of course, the uh, the 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 um, 9380 and the 72 here as well you can build trades into that side so it's really a matter of um, just recognizing a breakdown through here and the first step in the breakdown would be the 9450 becoming the retested resistance through there but any move down would see a bounce off the 9430 as well so um, look it's I, I just suggest um, you know that that, uh, that that you just trade what you see and uh, as far as I can see so far that the 9472 of support is the is the long trade to the upside uh, any move down through here can really sort of bounce because this is a positive move coming up through here so we would need to pull back under the 61.8 retracement level and get locked in there so I always use the pivot within group one so that would be the 9420 at that stage there so you've got base metals uh, to the downside which would be bringing this down but you've also got the US dollar uh, offering its support to the upside as well the other side of the coin too is that if our stock market has got support at, you know, still finding that support at uh, 47.20 and it rises, well, then uh, this can also be in conjunction with that as well. So just because of the resources, but those weaker figures coming out of China uh, and the copper market, of course, really sort of put a, buy, a bearish bias on this. But it's just finding a way in because at the moment, <clears throat> this is uh, a little bit high up through here and you know it is trending up. So you'd be working against the market. So you always need to be working with the market. Alrighty, well, that's it. Thanks for listening and uh, see you tomorrow.